So as a lot of you know, Scatter is probably the best scattering add-on for Blender that I've used so far. And so in this video, I wanted to talk about some of the top features contained inside of Scatter for Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so you can find Scatter in the Blender market. I will link to it in the notes down below. Note that it is on sale through uh, next Monday, I believe. So uh, this could be a good time to give it a look. And so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some of the best features contained inside of Scatter. So Scatter, for those of you that don't know, is a scattering extension or add-on for Blender that adds a ton of functionality having to do with like placing organic things and random things um, in inside of your models. So it's really great for creating like forests and grass and other things like that. It's just a really strong tool for those things. So whenever you get something that has as many features as Scatter does, because it has a ton, um, it can just be kind of overwhelming. So I would say probably the number one thing for me is how well they've done documenting this particular add-on. So you can go to the documentation tab and open up their site, but they've got a very detailed documentation in here that not only tells you what the different things do and how they work, you can click on them, but they've also got like videos in here that show you examples of how they're doing the different things. So this is probably one of the best implementations of documentation that I've seen. So that it actually shows you like, here's how you use each one of the different functions, right? So it actually shows you how to do this. In addition to having this for like all of the features, which again is like super, super helpful. Um, they also have example files that you can download in order to test out the different features. So you've got all these different example files that actually show you how the things are supposed to work so that you can actually learn how to use their advanced functions. So massive fan of this. I wish all of the add-on developers would do something like this because it makes working with this a lot easier. All right, so next up, we have the ability to actually download third-party additional packs that go into Scatter. So basically what you what you do is when you purchase, uh, like for example, like Grassblade or something like that, um, you can get the Scatter pack for that and you can actually install it inside of Scatter. So it actually works with some external libraries. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that, like for example, this is Grassblade. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that it actually says that it works with Scatter 5. So um, you wanna make sure that that's actually contained inside of the add-on that you're purchasing, but it has that ability to not only allow you to create those external biome packs, but then it also works with the asset browser. So let's say that I was to install this default Scatter pack in here just by finding that particular file like this. So you can use this in order to install this. Note that that is gonna take a while because it's gonna move a bunch of stuff around. And so you can also, um, when you open this up, if you look in your biomes manager, you can see the biomes that you have installed, but you can also find those, uh, the ones that are currently integrated with Scatter over here in the biomes online. So if you were to click on this, I assume it's just going to take you to the Blender market page. Yep, that's exactly what it does. It takes you to the Blender market page where you can uh, purchase that if you decide that you wanna do that. Um, but these come with Scatter. You can also access all of the assets that come with Scatter inside of the uh, inside of the asset browser. So you can bring in things like trees and other things like that. Note that when you bring these in, um, those automatically get brought in as bounds objects. So the tree is in there. You just need to go into your viewport display and inside of viewport display. So you want to go into object properties, viewport display. You can do display as textured or display as solid, but those get brought in as bounds in order to keep this from overwhelming your computer if you're bringing those in. So just be aware that that's a thing. But in order to get this to work, all you have to do is you just have to find the folder that those biomes get installed in. And there's information in the documentation about this as well, but you just need to add those to your asset library and then they're going to show up in this list down below. So another feature I really like that I think was added in Scatter version five is the ability to do wind. And so this is the example video of the wind, but basically what it does is it uses like procedural movement in order to create like a wind movement on your plants. So notice how it's been used on these low poly plants. You could swap them for the higher poly plants, I think, but um, this is just kind of a demo scene, but you can use this to adjust things like the direction as well as like the scale of the waves. So notice how if I move this up, this looks a lot more like a wave pattern that's in here, right? So you wanna keep, kind of keep this down a little bit, but you can use this in order to add that wind to your objects if you're creating like uh, animations or anything like that. Um, you can do that using the wind feature inside of Scatter 5. And so another cool thing is they're really trying to add tools that let you scatter things based on the way that like vegetation, for example, works in real life. And so what they've got is this ecosystem that's 
built in that basically allows different objects to be attracted to other objects, right? Because in a forest or something like that, you might see like smaller trees kind of clustered around bigger trees or bushes or something like that. Um, so this allows you to simulate that effect. And so practically, if we look at the example file, basically the way this is set up is it's set up with a grass only grows near the saplings. The saplings only grow near the tall pine trees. So if you add pine trees, so if we change our instances up, for example, you're going to get more saplings and more grass because they're all kind of linked together. If you adjust the seed, those are all going to kind of link together as well. So just a really interesting way of looking at scattering. And there's a bunch of different methods of distribution that are kind of built in here um, when you take a look at this. So there's also some interesting animation features built in. So for example, this is the example file for the falling leaves, but you've got the ability to actually add a falling animation in here. Note that there are some performance things to consider. Um, they note off to the side that uh, some of the more like high poly things inside of the model are probably slowing this down. Um, so it's definitely worth reading um, in order to make sure that you understand what's going on here, but there are animation features built into this tool as well. All right, and then you can't talk about a scattering add-on without talking about the camera culling and the object culling, because usually what you're doing, right, if we look at this scene right here, is you're simulating or you're scattering a bunch of like high poly objects, but you don't necessarily want anything but what's actually in the viewport of your camera, which is right here, to show up. So what this has is this has um, visibility and camera optimization running. Well, what happens is notice if I move this around, so I'm just gonna select this and tap G, it's gonna call objects out of the scene based on what your camera can see. So what that means is notice how if I move this over, it's adding the grass up here um, but it's hiding it everywhere else. So this is basically only scattering things in areas where your camera can see, meaning that your computer's not working in the background trying to render things that you can't even see inside of your view, which can be a massive performance and time saver. So remember that Scatter is on sale through next Monday. Um, this is just a few of the many features contained inside of this tool. It's one of the more feature-packed tools for Blender. So I will link to that in the notes down below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. As always, thank Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.